name is Adam Eckerly. I'm a senior technical marketing architect with the Cloud Platform Business Unit. Hi, my name is Ahmad Yunus. I'm a senior technical marketing engineer, also in the Cloud Platform Business Unit. And today, in this video, we're going to discuss the vSphere 6.5 vCenter Server Appliance deployment types. We're going to be talking about embedded versus external, what each deployment type is, and the benefits. We're also going to be covering enhanced link mode, or ELM and talking about what you should consider for ELM. And then we're going to conclude with reconfiguring a vCenter server appliance from an embedded deployment to an external deployment type. So let's get started. The first deployment type we're going to cover is the embedded deployment. An embedded deployment cons consists of having a platform services controller, or PSC, and vCenter server residing on the same virtual machine. So Adam, let's talk about some of the benefits for an embedded deployment type. Yeah, so as you can see, since everything like Ahmad said is running on the same virtual machine, it is very simple. The next thing we probably should debunk is when customers ask, is this really production ready? Yeah, absolutely. So the embedded node can, can handle the full amount of maximums that uh, any other deployment model can, can handle. So uh, an embedded node can handle up to, what is it, 4,000 hosts. Roughly, uh, yeah. Whatever and, the maximums guide says, yep. an embedded deployment can also support. Yeah, so I would say absolutely, it is production ready. The next benefit is this deployment model is, what would you call it, self-contained? Yeah, absolutely, self-contained. So there aren't any um, ways to sort of tie other vCenters into it. So um, it's not impacted by any other vCenters in the environment. So a good example here is if you're deploying it, let's say, for a DMZ zone, and you want it a self-contained, isolated deployment model, this would be a good way to start off. And I think we've got one more uh, uh, benefit to this type of model. Yeah, you're not locked in to this deployment model. You can actually reconfigure from an embedded to an external deployment if need be. So I think here we can, we can state that if you want to start off simple, you certainly can, and then later on, depending on enhanced link mode, which we'll talk about later, you can certainly externalize and not have to worry about it. Yeah, absolutely. I think the bottom line, right, is this is a perfectly good deployment model if it meets your requirements. Okay, so now let's talk about the next deployment model, which is the external deployment model. And in the external deployment model, we are now going to have the platform services controller on its own virtual machine and vCenter server on its own virtual machine. Now, the key benefit to this deployment model is having enhanced link mode. That should be your first decision point. Absolutely, and so enhanced link mode, right, means that we can log into either of these vCenter servers and be able to manage not only the other vCenter server uh, that we're in enhanced link mode with, but all of the resources underneath. The host so you're the saying that I can log into this vCenter server and still manage this vCenter server while logged in here? Absolutely. Everything, inventory, I can make changes. There's no difference between logging in here, managing here, and vice versa? Nope, absolutely not. It's the same seamless experience. Okay. And how many vCenters can I have in enhanced link mode? With vSphere 6.5 update 1, we can have up to 15 vCenters in a single SSO domain. Oh, wow. So we're increasing from 6.5 GA from the 10 to 15. Absolutely. Okay. So you want to talk about maybe some of the advantages of the external deployment other than, uh, well, let's, let's start off with enhanced linked mode, right? ELM, as we like to abbreviate. Right. So with an external deployment, we also can have the concept of multi-site. That's absolutely right. Where we can actually have multiple sites 
in a deployment. And a site is simply a logical boundary for your platform services controller within an SSO domain. Yep. Um, so another thing to talk about is, you know, th this may sound fantastic that I can manage all of these vCenters sort of in that, that single point of management. Uh, but uh, there's one thing that is also sort of a constraint, right, that may be a drawback uh, to this type of deployment, uh, version dependency, right? So Correct. in this type of deployment, all of my components, PSCs and vCenters, all need to be the same version. Exactly. Yeah. Now, the only time you will not have them on the same version is during the upgrade process. Because during the upgrade process, we'll start off with upgrading the platform services controller. Let's say you're on 6.0 and you want to get to 6.5. So you're going to upgrade all the platform services controller within your vSphere SSO domain. But that leaves your vCenters still on 6.0. We, we call that mixed mode, and that's okay. But it's only okay during upgrade time. That's right. Then you want to go ahead and upgrade your vCenter servers and get yourself on the same consistent versioning, and now you get the benefit of all the features and functionalities within 6.5. Exactly right. Um, and then the last thing to talk about is we do get some scale increases by having multiple vCenters uh, within this enhanced link mode environment. Uh, so for example, with 6.5 Update 1, we can manage up to 5,000 hosts in the vSphere domain uh, and up to 75,000 virtual machines within the SSO domain. So that is more than a single vCenter could manage on its own. Wow, that's, that's a lot to manage. So let's just jot that down, increased maximums. So the key here is to make sure that you are looking at the maximums guide. So that way you have a good idea of the supported numbers that you could have, whether you're embedded or running a external deployment on a single vCenter or multiple vCenters. Right, and we'll put a link to the maximums guide at the bottom of the screen. Okay, so now that we've kind of introduced the two deployment types and the benefits, we probably should talk about enhanced link mode. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So with enhanced link mode, as we talked about earlier, you have to have the external deployment model. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, so, so just to be crystal clear, uh, we did have some topologies that we have deprecated uh, since the 6.0 days and the 5.5 days where you could do linked mode and then subsequently enhance the linked mode uh, with embedded PSCs. But that has gone by the wayside. So if you want to take advantage of enhanced linked mode, we have to do external PSCs. Okay. So here I have two external PSCs. It doesn't matter if they're same site, different sites. The point is I need to have external PSCs that we're using for authentication purposes. Now. I'm going to draw my first vCenter server here. And I'm going to point it to this PSC. By merely doing this, I, have, I can manage this vCenter. If I want to add a second one, let's say to this same PSC, we can now manage both of these vCenters by logging in to any one of them. Yeah, that sounds great. OK. You think cool. we should add more? Yeah, absolutely. Let's okay. see, what, what would that look like? So we're going to add another one here. This time I'm going to point it to this PSC. So what's going to happen when I log into this vCenter server? Well, hopefully you'd be able to see all the other vCenters. Right. And again, the boundary here is the vSphere SSO domain. Right? As long as I'm with this domain, I can add as many as, again, in 6, 5, 10 vCenters. So that's my, my boundary, right? And it doesn't matter whether I'm within the same site or multi-site, just within the SSO domain. But what if I have another vCenter that's maybe an embedded, uh, has an embedded PSC? Can I add that in to this environment? So it would look something like this. Right, I have my PSC, I have my VC, but it is isolated. 
an embedded deployment cannot talk to an external deployment. So you absolutely have to have external PSCs absolutely for an, an, have uh, enhancing communities. Correct. Okay. What if I had another deployment though? Let's yeah, see. what if you had another external deployment? Sure. So what we can do here is I can have a PSC, right? And then I have a vCenter server. Can I connect these two? You should not be able to connect those two because no, they are in correct. separate SSO domains. Correct. I think the key here is when you're doing the deployment, there's two questions you need to consider. The first one is, is this a new or existing SSO domain? And if it's an existing, well, you have this. If it's a new, then you have this and you've isolated yourself during your deployment. Yep. Yeah, so it's very important that whatever SSO domains you have today, if they're separate, we just we can't merge them or connect them or anything like that today. Exactly. And then the second question is about site. And we'll cover site in a future video. But for now, just know that it's a logical boundary and way to group your platform services controller. That sounds great. So you mentioned at the beginning of the video or towards the beginning that there was a way to sort of move away from an embedded PSC because we talked about it being reconfigurable. Sure. So yeah. let's, let's kind of dig into that a little bit. Uh, so, uh, so I think the first thing we want to do is we want to draw out our embedded deployment. Okay. Right? So here we have, again, PSC, vCenter living on the same virtual machine. And what we want to do is we want to repoint this vCenter to another PSC. So the first step is we're going to draw an external PSC. And if you're following at home, that means you're going to deploy an external PSC. And now we're going to repoint this vCenter to this PSC, followed by reconfiguring it, which is going to basically uninstall this PSC, and now this becomes a standalone vCenter server. I think I know the command to do that, and that would be the CM SSO util reconfigure, if I can spell. <laughs> That's reconfigure command, That's right? Absolutely and so this and ends up. Can't remember that. The way I remember it is CMSSO util is changed mind SSO utility because I did change my mind. So yeah, very good. <laughs> uh, so now that we've um, we've repointed and we've or we've reconfigured, we've decommissioned that embedded PSC through this CMSSO util reconfigure command. Now we've got our external deployment. But I thought the whole point of this, right, is to prepare for enhanced linked mode. Okay. So then what, what would be next? So prepare for this. So now, if I can draw a straight box, is I am going to do that. So now I've deployed a secondary vCenter server. I can now point it to this external PSC, and voila, we have enhanced linked mode. That sounds great. And now kind of the sky's the limit. Well the configuration maximums guide is the limit Exactly. Uh, as far as adding additional vCenters and additional PSCs and going into multi-site, which we'll talk about a lot of that uh, coming up in another video. But uh, you can see from what we've drawn, uh, now we're enabled for enhanced linked mode uh, and we, by reconfiguring our embedded uh, PSC out to an external deployment. I think to recap, the, the key here is understanding why you're deploying which deployment model and then after that, figuring out, okay, what is supported in regards to the maximums guide. And based off that, coming up with some sort of design of what your deployment is going to look like. And now you can deploy it. And if you do happen to have an embedded deployment, you can externalize. The key, though, which is something we, we haven't mentioned, is what if I have multiple embeddeds. Can I link those guys or is that a no-no? That was a one of those deprecated topologies back in the 5.5 and, and 6.0 days uh, where now we absolutely cannot do that in 6.5. Okay, so deprecated 
before, meaning can do, still support it up to a certain point, but now not. Don't want you to do it. In fact, in many situations, you cannot even go down that path. Gotcha. So if you're you know, getting ready to upgrade and you're in that situation today, we'd absolutely recommend that you get yourself out of that situation uh, by doing some of the CMSSO util reconfiguring uh, prior to the upgrade. That way, you don't find yourself in a spot where you're sort of in an unsupported uh, configuration or topology for some amount of time until you fix it. Sounds good. All right. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching. Thank you.